thank you for everyone listening to the podcast. Uh, this is episode 41 of the Homestead Shop Talk podcast with Al from Lumina Acres, Ben from Holler Homestead, and myself, Jason, from So the Land. And uh, what what did you guys have for dinner today? Tonight? Did you have, pork did you have dinner? Pork chops. What was that? Pork chops and pork applesauce. Chops. <laughs> <laughs> we had a dish called Cheeseburger Mac. It's basically, it's kind of like mac and cheese, but honestly, it tastes like you're eating a cheeseburger. Like, it's pretty good. Nice. Yeah, we had a... Some shredded beef, I guess, like a roast with some salad and some potato fries. Mm. It was Sounds good. good. <laughs> that sound good. Did you just Pretty finish? Simple. Yeah, we just finished right now. That's why it's on your mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As I was eating it, I was like, you know, what? I'm going to ask the guys what they had for dinner today. <laughs> <laughs> so we have no topic today. We're just going to shoot the breeze. So I guess was everybody's meat from their homestead? Yep. Yes. Same here. That's, nice. that's, that's like I bet you all the meat that we all ate was from our own homestead. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, we're getting that's, pretty low here, but yeah, the uh, the pasta was not from our homestead. That was Azure standard, but yeah, the uh, mm. the meat was. Yeah, that's cool. So we were talking earlier, Al. You said the eclipse is happening at your place. What when is that? This yeah. week. The eclipse happens next week. Monday. This coming Monday. So the Monday after the podcast airs, the eclipse is happening. And they're oh, okay. calling for like crazy traffic. They say like everybody's traveling to go see the eclipse, but I guess wow. we'll find out. I guess I, I haven't looked into it, but you said we, we're not seeing it over here, Ben. Is that what you said? I mean, I think we can see part of it, but like the path of totality, it's like going from up by Maine straight down to Texas. Just draw a line like that. Oh. And uh, I know the one that happened in 2017. I don't think Southern California was in the path of that last one, but we could still see it. It just didn't get like it got a little bit dark, but you could tell yeah. when it was going on because it was like, hey, is there a cloud? There's not a cloud in the sky. And we ran out and I got my welding hoods and we're sitting there looking <laughs> up at it. And it was pretty cool. So we'll probably do that. Now, I don't know, like a lot of the weather apps say it's going to be cloudy next Monday. So <laughs> we'll see. I'd like to see another one. My see. weather is saying like partly cloudy. Mm. So cross your fingers. Right. So Yeah, that that reminds me uh the eclipse that was here. We were here in North Carolina at that time. I think we lived here a year. I, I remember I did a video on that. I have a video like one of our earlier videos of us watching the eclipse. I'm curious to see if the animals act any different during it like i don't think they probably will but i don't know and like the you can see like the moon phases affect the animals sometimes so i don't know if that will affect them you'll see any different behavior to to they start acting crazy and busting through the fences we'll know why that is something gone. that is something funny is like why do all the animals start acting crazy people start acting crazy during a full moon like mm -hmm. why is that i have a i, don't know. I have a friend who's a, a cop and he's like, oh, that's absolutely a thing. Like, it is. absolutely. Like, full moon, yeah. you're going to get the weirdest calls. Yep. We'd, I, when I was a cop, we'd be out and be like, what is going on? And you'd look up like, oh, it's a full moon. Like, <laughs> it's just one of those things. If it was a full moon, you had some crazy phone calls. I don't. It, wow. it was bizarre. Yep. That's when the parasites come alive. Something. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you guys working on this week? So I, uh, I'm finished with foundation stuff i'm putting in rebar that was a lot of hard digging putting in this footer um there's a lot of roots and stuff that had to come out uh and then the bottom most portion the lowest level i had to pick it out with a pickaxe so it was very slow going very hard compacted clay uh, but we got it we got the forms in i'm just doing rebar in the next couple days got something going on tomorrow so i won't be able to work on it tomorrow but friday i'm putting in all the rebar well i'm starting the rebar i won't say putting in the rebar it takes a long time to bend all that rebar so uh yeah other than that we've been getting garden 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 more garden um i've been dealing with a lot of uh you know, just your maintenance stuff, pulling weeds and getting beds ready. Uh, our neighbor, uh, Michaela, it ordered 
a whole bunch of onion starts and they sent her like she ordered it was like 50 or something like that and they sent her several hundred i don't know if it was a mistake on their part or what the deal was but she was like hey i have all of these onion starts do you want some just to come get them so uh <laughs> i uh, i had to prep a bed and i had to prep two beds actually because it was so many onion starts and i had to get all these onions in the ground and they look like they're doing great they don't look like they dried out too much um and then it just you know the normal stuff um uh, just starting to deal with spring things and we've had to start mowing already, which is kind of weird, you know, like the past wow. couple of years we've had grazing animals. And so as soon as that grass starts growing, it's like, Oh yes, we don't have to feed hay anymore. But now this year it's like, Oh man, we gotta, I gotta go buy gas. Gotta get the lawnmower ready. Gotta put new blades on like all that stuff. Hey, let me ask you guys. I, I I'm sure both of you guys can feel my pain. How is it you can mow your lawn in one spot every week, but as soon as you put on a brand new set of blades, you're going to hit a rock in that same spot that you've never hit a rock in before? Like, how does that work? Yep. I don't know. I, I don't usually put on new blades, so I just I just let it ride, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just shop in mine with a grinder because I always hit rocks. <laughs> I actually had a set of blades that... Uh, we probably had on here for like three years and you know when we're first when we first got here there you, you don't know the areas where the rocks are hiding and so yeah. i mean you just like <laughs> and you see sparks and chunks of rock fly out from under the mower it's like hey cool i'm making gravel uh well i finally decided it was time to buy some blades and so i ordered a set of blades and side by side like i thought i bought the wrong size blades because these blades were so short uh, there wasn't anything left to sharpen. Uh, the blades were about half the wow. thickness and about a, like an inch <laughs> each side shorter than the new blades. I put new blades on this thing. That lawnmower cuts perfectly flat. I thought it was just old and run out, like, you know, worn out. Uh, yeah, yeah. A new set of blades or maybe sh sharpen them every now and then. You'd be amazed yeah. how <laughs> nice your, uh, your mower treats you. Yeah, uh, besides, you know, working on the house and getting garden stuff ready, uh, I'm trying to think. I need to start keeping a list. Uh, we have cut back how much we're filming just just for mental sanity. Um, we were posting four days a week, and we went down to two days a week. Uh, you know, Meg's getting ready for this baby, and it's because she she's the one who edits uh it's a little bit easier on her. And it, actually, it's been really nice because not filming every day, it frees her up a couple days a week. She can actually come out and hang out with me while I'm working. Uh, and it's been it's been really nice. It's been really nice to have my, my, my buddy back again, sit out there and talk about all sorts of stuff while I'm working. It's, uh, it's like a it's breath of fun. fresh air when that happens, I think. It, it is. It really is. <laughs> you know, and we're going to – we enjoy it because – you know, come summertime when the garden's like in full swing, uh, she's in the kitchen canning and doing all that stuff. And I can only be outside so much until the heat is just like too much and I got to come inside in the air conditioning. But uh, there's this brief period when she's canning and she's busy and I'm the one who's out doing stuff. And it's like we don't see each other for a while, you know, usually until about July. Then I'm like, yeah, I'm by 10 o'clock i can't go outside anymore otherwise i'm gonna die but yeah i'll take it while we got it and then the weather has been so freaking nice the past two weeks oh man this is the weather i live for like today last night we had a thunderstorm roll through and like two day past two days it's been like 80 degrees kind of kind of hot not very fun to be in the sun uh but this thunderstorm came through last night and i got up this morning and like I'm opening up all the windows because it's like, you know, 50, 60 degrees first thing in the morning. Nice, cool breeze. And I think the high today was like 72 or something like that with a nice breeze. Air's crisp and clear. Oh, it's just beautiful. I live for this weather. Sorry, Al. <laughs> the only thing I will say, that's our summer weather. That's like what we have like for quite a few months out of the year. So. Oh, okay. When you guys are hot down there and like 
and not enjoying it. I'm like, that'd be me. I'd be like Ben. I'd be outside for a few hours in the morning and then I'd be hibernating in the house. So that's always been like yeah. my toss up. Do I want to be in the house hibernating in the winter when it's cold? Or do, if I move south, I'd be hibernating in the summertime opposite. when it's hot. I'd be opposite. It, you know what? Like coming from Bakersfield, California, uh, it's miserable for a lot of the year. Like it really is miserable for a lot of the year. And so coming out here, we truly have four seasons. You know, it's cold for three months in the winter. It's beautiful for three months in the the spring and in the fall. And then really like the end of June, all of July and all of August is miserable. You know, that's the thing. Yeah. Traveling the country, we're traveling the country. And when we got to Michigan, we were in Michigan in July. And all of the locals are like, we're having a heat wave. This is miserable. We're dying. And me and Meg are walking around like, it's 85. Like, this is nice. It's not 110 degrees. Like, this is great. And, you know, but all the locals, they're telling you, yeah, this is the hottest it's ever been. This Don't move here. It's miserable. <laughs> and the thing traveling the country really taught me was in summertime, it's hot no matter where you are. You know, it might be hot for that area, but generally if it's summertime, it's hot. And so it kind of, it changed my perspective. Uh, you know, every place will tell you they got the hottest heat. Uh, people from Arizona, sorry, anybody from Arizona, you guys are the worst about it. You you like to say your hot is the hottest. It's like, it's hot everywhere in the summertime. Like it really is. Uh, a lot of people are like, well, yeah, wait till you come to the South and you try this humidity. Yeah, the humidity sucks. So, I don't know. Dry heat, 100, 110, 115 degrees, pretty miserable. Uh, 85, 90 degrees with 90% humidity, pretty miserable. It is what it is. You got to choose when you're hibernating. That's right. Other than that, I think that's... That, sorry, that, that's about my week. We're supposed to have another big snowstorm tonight. Ooh. <laughs> yep. Gosh. Oh man! Five, I'd say five to eighteen inches, depending on what radio station you listen to. Wow! Really? Yeah. Man, the worst part so, is yesterday was sixty, and like we've already had two mud seasons, and it's like dry as a not dry as a bone, but it's dried out. There's really like no mud, so now we're going to be on our third mud season in probably like a month, month and a half. That's the worst part. We normally don't have weather like this. Are you getting the spring fever at all, or does that come a little bit later? No, I've, we've been getting it, but it's been weird because we've had, we've already had, like, the first mud season, the roads got really bad, the mud came out, snow melted, it started to get pretty nice, and then we got that dumping of snow, we got, like, 18 inches, and now all that snow's melted, it just started to dry out, like, we're, I was digging fence post holes, and, like, it's dry. It's like a little clay, muddy, but not like mud, mud. And I'm like, okay, this is nice. And then it's like, oh wait, we got five to eighteen inches coming overnight. Like, <laughs> so we're getting spring fever, but we'll see. We got some bigger projects we're working on that we're not really talking about. So I think those things are keeping us focused, mm. but not thinking about like the garden because usually we're thinking about the garden and it's like, oh, I want to get out there and plant, but I know we can't yet. So. So, yeah, you're staying busy with the other big projects. Yep. So I finally broke down because of you guys, and I bought a Leatherman. <laughs> so this one, What'd you get? This one, Ben. It's called the Ark. One-handed. Ark. One-handed. One-handed. So I've been hemming and hawing about this, I think, ever since we talked about it. Wait, I do, like it it. do it again? <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's like a switchblade. Right. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Is it spring loaded? Nope, not spring loaded. Oh. This is one of the ones that's not, but they call it the free technology. So it like easily... it, I mean it listening to the clicking, like it sounds exactly like the same way this one does. That nice crisp click when it locks open. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, got a weird... it looks like mine, but maybe a little cooler. It's got a weird locking technology here. So even though it like mm. it swings like a butter knife, like a what do they call those? A butterfly knife. In butterfly the 80s. knife. Yeah. Yeah. But it locks. But I also like it because it's got a clip, so you can put it in your pocket, and you don't have to have a sheath. It looks it similar to mine, but a little bit different. I'll have to look that one up. That looks really cool. Cool. Finally broke down. Is that your first Leatherman? 
Um, I had one when I was probably in high school, but I never liked it because you had to have a pouch on your oh, belt. Yeah. And I I don't know. I don't like taking that on and off my belt every day. Man, I love having mine. Had this I, n- I never used to have any knife on me or nothing yep. growing up until it was probably a couple of years after we moved here. And I was like, yeah, I should probably hold something. At least an, I started with a knife. And then I was like, I'm going to get a Leatherman. You kind of move up. I always have I always have had a knife, but this was the first real Leatherman I've had. I've had it for a week and I've been using it like at least a couple of times a day. The other cool thing is the cutters, they got cutters on it. I don't know if you can see that, but you can replace the cutters. They got a little oh, yeah. head and then yeah, it's got a wire. I like that. I, I kind of want to get some new cutters for mine. I saw they sell copper cutters. They sell oh, hard really? steel cutters. Like, yeah, they, they got them all. So what's yeah. that one called? I'm going to look it up. The arc. ARC. Did you engrave your name on it at all? No, I didn't. <laughs> you could. Yeah, I think it was extra money. You could get patterns or your, or your yeah. name on it. But I figured you guys oh. would like that. I got my I got my test results back. My prostate is in perfect shape. So I mean, wow. I was pretty excited about that. Congratulations! All my, all my blood work, no fingers. <laughs> wow, that's that's awesome, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is good to hear. Like that's good news. I'm, I'm glad your prostate checks out. Thank you. You guys don't have to be worried anymore. Just go get your blood drawn, get your prostates checked. Yes, it's a lot I easier now. Do <laughs> don't be I scared. Do, I think I'm doing the blood work uh, next week. There you go. <laughs> so we'll see. Yep. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of fencing. I know how you've been feeling this winter, Jason. Yep. Yep. Did you finish? We did, and we got the cows and all the animals into the barn. So, like, how big of an area did you do? I'm going to say about an acre. And which size of Energizer are you using? I am using the Premier One. I think it's the biggest one Premier One makes that plugs in. Because we're probably going to have, I'm hoping by the end of the summer, we'll have 20 to 30 acres fenced in. I oh, nice. Say. And I want to have gonna that, use that. You're going to use that one charger for that? That's what I'm, That's what my goal is, is we can, if, is to have that one charger do it. It's going to be on both sides of the road. So I'd have to, I'll have to run like a burial line underground. And if I can't, if it's too much distance, I'll have to plug one in at the house. Cause I like the 110 volt ones better than the battery powered ones. I just feel like they, Amen, hit, brother. it hits yeah. at 12,000 kilovolts or yeah, 12 kilovolts so that's where i'm kind of at of uh figuring out what energizer i'm going to use so the premier one one does not my video and equipment does not pick it up i don't get a okay on the mic. i will i will share that information with meg we might get a new plug-in energizer because <laughs> i would say that is the closest thing to a marital dispute that we have on this property <laughs> is the clicking of the energizer because uh, she's got to listen to it during editing yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, she'll, she'll, uh, the other day, our uh, video we just did the other day, I actually remembered and I walked over there and I turned it off. She, I, she, I like, she cooked me a nice dinner that night. She was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't have to listen to that. So, yeah, yeah, I'll look into the Premier One Energizer then. Yep. Nice. It works good. It hits hard. I, I haven't touched it yet. Unfortunately, the puppy did. He didn't Ooh. like it. Yeah, he was not a fan, but don't imagine. Hopefully, hopefully he'll only hit it once, and then yeah, he learns. But we're, we're trying to teach him the command far enough when he's walking around, with walking around the perimeter of the fence, and he'll get so close to the electric fence, he'll be like far enough, and then he'll he's getting pretty good. He'll turn around and come back. So we're hoping if we tell him far enough and he hits the fence, he'll learn. And then also if we say far enough, he'll kind of like remember like. If we're not by a fence, but if we're just out walking and doing something, if we say far enough, it might be like, oh, yeah, there's a little bit of a sting if I don't listen to that one, that command. Far enough, he's like yeah. traumatized. <laughs> he gets a little twitch. I know. <laughs> so are you hooking up uh, nets to that energizer as well? I think I will. So that, that energizer, there's different modes. So if like full blast is 12 kilo, kilowatts. Um, and it's up to eight joules and then you can oh, turn it, a big you can energizer. turn it down. Yeah. You can turn it down to eight instead of 12, you can go down to eight 
and the normal pulse pulse is every one and a half seconds you get a pulse but you can change it to every two and a half yeah so i'm gonna have to say like some of those settings you might have to change for a net so you don't burn through kind of thing yeah that's what i'm trying to figure out i was debating of doing a 12 jewel or 18 jewel so ours is an eight jewel yeah the one we have is an eight jewel 12 12 kilowatts, eight joule. Yeah, it's just, you know, I mean, at one time, I mean, we're like, currently we're like almost 10, 100 foot nets right now. Yep. It's a lot. I mean, I don't see, I don't think we'll charge every single net off of the perimeter fence, but some of them, and it'd be nice to have that option. Um, Especially when you get new animals. I think that like for me, that'll be the big thing. Like we can have like a strong energizer. So when you're training yeah. and the animals hit it once or twice, I think they're gonna like be like, okay, I won't mess with that, right? Because the cows haven't touched it. Like I think they go up and sniff it, but they haven't touched it yet. So I think they can just sense it for some. You know, they're used to the <laughs> oh. other energizer, but that's not anything compared to the yeah, new one. Twelve thousand. They can. They can probably like if they get their nose close, it probably tickles just in the air. Probably. That's yep. a powerful fence. Yep. Ours is ten thousand, and it'll knock the taste out of your mouth. Like it is a, mm. that's a jolt, man. Like, yep. I hate when I touch that fence. Uh, Twelve thousand. It's like that's a little overkill. Yeah. But hey, like you got to keep your animals in and keep other things yeah. out. Right. That's the big one. It's keeping the other things out. But yep. I think I'll turn it down to eight after a little while. And once the animals have, are used to it, like the new perimeters and everything. And then if, when we get new animals, we'll turn it up back to 12 and just kind of go back and forth. I like the idea of turning it up and down. Yep. Because there's going to be some times where we're not going to need all, all of that. Like in the winter, we're not going to run all these nets. Right. But if we could lower it a little bit and then raise it when we need it. Yeah. Yep. So the cows are loving the new, the new barn. Brutus is loving having the cows with them. So he likes having the company at night in the barn with him. That's it's cool. nice. It's nice having a barn to go in and out of and do all the milking in. It's a lot more convenient to be inside and have everything where you need it versus being outside all the time and having to bring everything to you and then put it away every day. So right. like in the spring, summer, when you take them out of the barn, you're going to milk them in your portable no, I, I think we're gonna try milking in the barn and then bring them out. Cause we, so we got to cat. We got to separate anyways because we calf share. So if we bring Mama inside, I think we'll just milk her inside and then bring her back out. And we'll leave. We'll probably leave the boy outside overnight and let him eat grass all all night long. But I see. So, oh, I what's the name of your energizer? Let me look up real quick. See if I can find it on Premier One. Is it a Speedrite? Nope, it's their brand. Oh, it's the actual Premier One brand, huh? Yep, it's the Premier One. Primer brand. Shock. Primer Shock, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking it up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure that out. I'll, I will <laughs> gladly order something that doesn't click on camera all the time. I, you actually, had you I've had, we talked about I've it. had, a, I've had a couple people mention it in person. They're like, "Have you ever thought about turning off your net? I can hear it in all your videos." And it's like, ah, right. yeah, we, I put it on a timer. Uh, like I tried that for a minute, but then the pigs learned that between you know nine o'clock in the morning and you know five o'clock in the evening, the fence is off, and they started digging out, and it was like, okay, I got to leave it on. Yep. Yeah. So I got the Prima Shock Eight, so it's eight joules. Eight joules. It goes right. up. It goes up to twelve kilowatts. I just mm, bought the whole okay. kit, and it comes comes with the tester and all the ground rods. So for us, and I think probably for you guys, you guys have pretty got clay, so it's probably wet most of the time. I only have yep. one ground rod in, and it's hitting. I don't know if it's hitting eight joules, but it's hitting hard. But they say if you if it's not, you have to put up to I think twenty four feet of ground rod. So I think it would be. Wow, that's a yeah. bunch of ground rods. But I, I mean, I I bet if you're in Texas, you would need it. You know, I think that's the big thing with the fences. For some reason, if you're in dry soil, you need a lot of ground rods. So I did two six foot ground rods for my, I just have the, uh, track supply energizer. It's the biggest one they sell and it's, uh, seven something, almost eight joule. And yep. have when I like the first ground rod, I didn't really like it, it hit like the, 
solar energizers, but when I put that second ground rod and pounded that thing all the way into the ground, yeah, yeah, buddy. Yeah, it, I've, I've seen pigs do backflips when they touch that wire. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's what I need. Do any of you guys have an SDS, like hammer drill? I have a hammer drill, but I, I never think to use it. That probably would have like, worked real good. Well, they make, I didn't know it until I was doing my last, um, the workshop and I was doing the solar kit in there and somebody was like, oh, they make a hammer, they make a, a ground rod pounder to put into your hammer drill. I had bought one. I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but then you can just use your SDS hammer drill and pound your ground rods and then like it works slick. It's like, I think it was like 15 bucks for the, the, bit the same, uh, they said they use that when you're building their high tunnel with the pipe, the pipes, panel oh, really? the pipes. Yeah, that's the directions say you could use. Hmm. And they sell an adapter. The farmer's friend where, where I got it, they sell an adapter for for a high tunnel kit. Interesting. Pound. I debated because I, I, I don't have a I don't have one of those hammers, so I, yep. I debated. I was like, should I get a hammer because it's you know it's cheap, a little bit cheaper, and then I can use it for multiple things. But I'm like, what am I going to use it for? I've never used one before. Right. I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to get the gas powered pounder. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we do. It. Uh, I bought one. And I used it for the jobs that I needed it on, and it has sat in the box ever since. So that's how it goes. But when you need it, it is so nice, like drilling through concrete. We do we have all concrete slabs, so if you're doing like your sill plates and stuff, it drills through the concrete so much nicer. Mm. We've used ours quite a few times, but yeah, once we're doing done doing building projects, we won't use it very often. So I broke down and bought a bunch of hay. I hate to do it, but how much? How many? Square. Mm. Square bales, I bought 80 square bales, put them in the barn. Oh, that's a lot of hay. I know, but I want to put it out on on pasture and feed it like feed it excessively. I don't want to say like super excessively, but more excessively to the cows so they can leave it on the new pasture areas to hopefully get more grass to grow better in the future. So yeah. like, man, I hate doing this, but I hate spending the money up front, but I, it'll be worth it in the long run. That is the quickest, easiest way to get your pastures looking wonderful is just overfeed yep. the hay let the cows waste it because come springtime all of a sudden that bare spot that you've always dealt with is now green right i'm like all right we'll do it it's not always fun at first but no i don't know about you guys have you guys had like nasty comments this week on your videos i feel like i've been seeing a bunch of them just nothing major just silly ones and i'm like man i don't know what's going on out in the atmosphere but i got one comment she's like I've told you this before. You need to dye your hair, dye your beard, and let your wife give you give you a haircut. <laughs> wow, that's getting personal. I, I was like, old well, man. I, just, I, I like it. Second time out, she told you this. <laughs> I've told you this before. I'm like, okay. man, can you can you imagine being married to being married to that? No. Like, <laughs> watch out for those landmines, guys. I think some people need a timeout from watching YouTube sometimes. Right? Could you imagine they, telling they're getting too they're getting too involved? Yeah. Could you imagine <laughs> telling somebody that to, that to their face though? I nope. know, right? There's a lot of things like comments that we get since we started this build project. I have quit reading comments because you there are to. so many. Like, you got to protect your 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 mental state. If you let too much of that negativity in, like you start hating life. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I forgot where I was going with that. I, <laughs> you just got me thinking about negative comments. I'm just like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. I, for real, I, I quit reading comments about a month and a half ago, and it was real nice for a little bit. But uh, I don't know, something weird happened. Like, I'm not watching our videos. Usually I put on our video, and I let it play while I read comments, and I'm not watching our videos. And... I'm forgetting that I do YouTube every day. Like, it's weird. Like, it's, I guess I need to start watching our videos again because I'm not in the zone. <laughs> I think it was, yeah, you're taking a break. <laughs> right. There was Tuesday's morning video. We just had a bunch of like silly, nasty comments. Like, there was that one. There was two other ones. I'm just rolling around laughing because I'm like, what What else can you do? It was like, who would, who would say this or who would comment this? This kind of stuff. Like, I couldn't imagine even commenting some of the stuff in somebody's chat. Yeah. Well, I put out a video. Uh, you know, I rented that little mini skid steer, and then I used my mini truck. So yep. it was like mini machines, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saying on, on the thumbnail. Um, I get multiple people say, 
saying, uh, "Oh man, you need to you need to stop it with these mini trucks and these uh, little tiny tractors that you're getting." He's like, "You need to uh, get some real machines." You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, emailing me. <laughs> that, that's that's the whole. Okay, send it on over. I'll use it. Right. I know. People tell me that all the time. You need to stop it with these. People get offended with my um, cooney pigs and uh, mini trucks. You know how excited <laughs> like our forefathers would be if they had a mini truck and they had a mini skid steer versus a set of oxen? <laughs> I know. I would take that any day. Hey, you know, this might sound weird, but I, I have this kind of fantasy. Like I would like to either do like plowing with mules or oxen or something like that. That would be so yeah. cool to learn, like just to do it. Mm -hmm. Try it. Yep. Do you guys have local fairs down there? Local ish. Fair, yeah. Local ish. To any like the one we have up here, they ha a lot of people they do like the oxen pulls and people train them, like the team of oxen. It's kind of crazy, like what they can train a team of oxen to do. That'd be cool to see. Uh, I I don't think there's anything like that at the uh, it's the Mountain State Fair up in Asheville. Um, yeah. Uh, not that I've seen. I would have to look at a program and see if they've got that, but I've never seen I, something I like that. You you hear about it here and there, like little farms. He's still using horses and stuff, but I'm like, I've never seen it, so I, I think it's pretty rare. Yep. Now, yeah, our local fair, they have it, and it's amazing how many, like it's, I haven't been to the fair in quite a while, but we used to go. I mean, I bet you there was 25, I would say, to 30. 30 different teams of oxen like from wow. around the states it was like i was pretty impressive that there's still that many people and there were some of them were younger people that just trained like just trained them you know they were just i think they would train them for the fair and that was probably they do stuff at the house but they that was about it that's kind of neat to see so we had uh so our four uh cooney pigs escaped this week uh oh um, um which ones the little ones the four yeah, the ones we had last year, they're a year old now. Okay. And we're going to butcher this year. Um, I heard you talking. That's you know, why. Mm hmm Oh, yeah. Like, as soon as they hear my truck turn on, they, everybody goes crazy. <laughs> here comes lunch. You know, here comes breakfast. You know, that's like the lunch truck, man. So, you know, if I don't feed these four pigs first, they're going crazy. Uh and so there's this one pig, female pig. She's the leader. Every time she, whatever she does, the rest follow. And she's the all of it. She's gotten out before. She's always testing the fence. And for whatever reason, this well, this energizer was that was on there was it was low. And she found out about it, <laughs> and just bulldozed the fence. And then all of them followed her. And then they just like went. They they looked for me. Like they ran to me. And so where's the snacks, right man? Some, <laughs> yeah yeah they're, they're ready for to eat and so i mean luckily i mean they're really easy to put away because they're just they just follow you and uh they follow me and they i just grab a bucket and just like all right come on and they go back but man i was this close i was i was like lorraine had to hold me back because i was like i'm gonna kill that pig i'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> that one female pig i know it was her i was like i'm gonna turn you into pulled pork i'm like <laughs> big run I'm All done. Days. I was like, I'm calling Ben. I was like, tell him to get the smoke ready. We're having smoke <laughs> pork tonight. Like I was this close. Because uh, any day, any time, you just let me know. <laughs> yeah, other other pigs are all the other pigs are fine. Like they're just like perfectly content. And this one always tests it, but <laughs> she's still alive. She's still there. I just For fixed now. my charger, and now it's hot again. So hopefully we have another problem, but. Darn it. Yep. I got a I I had one of the guinea hogs, one of our breeders, she same thing. She she learned that she could time it and she could bust through that fence. And as soon as I would come out there with the feed, like I'm in the act of like dishing out the feed for them, and she just bust <laughs> through the fence. And like yeah. she would stop and stare and realize that the feed is in the pen and she's on the outside of the pen. It's like <laughs> Yeah. Why why did you bust through the fence? And so finally I ran a line from my big energizer to the pig fence. And once that you know, once she started doing backflips because that fence was so hot, 
the problem was solved. But I know how frustrating it is. It's just like can't deal with you. You're you're going <laughs> you're going on the smoker tonight. I know. That's how I was. I mean, it's such a nice morning. It's spring, like <laughs> cool weather. You know, like man, ruined my morning. Haven't had my coffee yet. So with that, also this week we had our piglets, man. Like nice, yay! They're a week old now already, and uh, I've been I've been behind on videos, posting videos. But um, she had six pigs, which last year she had eight. Okay. So it was probably like four days after we thought we well we I think we said like March twenty fourth or something she was gonna have pigs, and then she had them the twenty eighth. So almost. It was pretty close. close. She was just moping around. And I think that night we noticed milk coming out. And Lorraine's like, hey, there's milk coming out. And I think she's going to have these pigs tonight. And so the next morning we woke up and they were there. They're sneaky so, like that. Yeah, it was just, just, I don't know if she had them at night or like early that morning, but they were already up and about. And now they're already leaving the shelter and they're walking around on grass and <clears throat> they look pretty healthy. How many do you plan on keeping? Yeah, they're like little burritos um i think we're gonna keep two two i think we decided on two and sell four um i believe there's two males and four female oh, man you so... got the good ratio man this last <laughs> batch of pigs we wound up with like 14 males and two females wow that's a lot of pigs you got to castrate you, i know you got to keep your breeders they they throw mostly girls that's awesome castrating man i do not like doing that me neither i know she had the babies and we're like oh you know we have to castrate if she has males we're like oh yeah i forgot <laughs> but i went to an agricultural high school and we th we had pigs there and i wish i didn't we there was castrating day one time and like everybody was like yeah i'm out of here and like everybody just like <laughs> walked off and i'm like man i wish i would have paid a little bit more attention and actually got into it but i can't blame myself being in high school listening to squealing pig no. not no, wanting no, to get right. involved <laughs> yeah you can't yeah you're in high school you're like you're not thinking about that you no know, they're like yeah just take this razor blade slit it pull them and you're done you know oh, wow. it was the same thing it was like nah, I'm, I'm good <laughs> <laughs> i will say uh like anybody out there listening if you have pigs to castrate do them when they're small uh i i usually try to do mine at 12 days uh, Jason can attest to what happens if you don't wait or if you don't do it at 12 days and you have to do it at like three or four months or in our case, what, what were those pigs? Like a year old. Yeah. They were yeah. Really it was, I mean, they're, they're just heavy. It was me, Jason and Jason's father-in-law wrestling these pigs trying to, yeah, it, it was horrible. We got it done, but man, those, those are some big pigs. And they were guinea hogs. Yeah. They were American guinea hogs. They're so much easier when they're the size of a burrito. I want to say we did our coonies at, I want to say they were at three months. I wonder what age you can, how early you can do them. From what I've read, I've got a conventional pig book. They'll do them day one. It makes more, makes sense. I, I mean, coonies. Co coonies are pretty small. Probably yeah. hard to find. <laughs> they are very hard to find. <laughs> even at three months, I was like, I, we're not doing this because I can't even find them. They're like little little beans <laughs> dude it was hard <laughs> it was so hard get the tweet yeah, I, I can't i can't see doing it at, like at a day like in one day like as soon as they're born like they'll be super tiny yeah they'd be super know. tiny uh Let, yeah at 12 days i don't know why i picked 12 days it was just like you know what i'm i'm castrating at 12 days and that was what we did i would say like the size of maybe like a peanut, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, they're big enough. You can fill them. You can find them. But I will say it does depend on the pig. Um, we, we've had a couple yeah. guinea hogs that are just not developed at all. And, you know, I have them all laid out on the table after I've castrated all these pigs. And it's like biggest to smallest. Generally, they're all the same size. And then you get one or two real runty pigs and theirs are a quarter of the size of what the normal pigs are, which, you know, they're runts. So it makes sense if, you know, they, they just have developmental problems. So have you guys put, uh, so we have a castrated male Cooney pig. I was going to put him in with Zeke 
our bore so that way our bore is not by himself and i did that and the bore was just running after him so i i, I assume that that's you know i, I that, that's what that was going to happen right like yeah they're you know he said hey you know trying to be dominant and establish that but f- f- when you're looking at this you're like Man, this pig's gonna kill this little pig. Yep. You know, and so we put them in with the boar, and they right away the boar started running after him, and I never seen our boar run this fast. I didn't think he could run this fast, <laughs> but but he was running after this little pig, and uh, it just got me thinking. Like I don't know if this is right, uh, if we should have done this. Like I started to have second thoughts, you know, and um. So I ended up getting the chicken tractor, putting it in there, and then putting that castrated pig in the chicken tractor so that way Zeke can't get at him. And then um, Zeke was trying, still trying to get in the chicken tractor. Like, he was, like, pushing on it. Um, and the other pig was just like, I don't want any part of this. Uh, He's going to eat me. Yeah, I was really worried. Like, I don't know. I didn't know if that was normal. I mean, I, to some degree, I guess it's normal, but... I was really concerned that they were just going to bust out of that netting and start running around. So we left them in there that night in the chicken tractor and then we slept on it. And then the next morning I was like, you know what? I'm just going to move them out of here. I don't know. I wanted to do that last year and I didn't. And so this year I was like, oh, I'm going to move some, I'm going to move that male pig in with Zeke's, you know, just because he's lonely. I don't know if he's lonely. (laughs) In my mind, he's lonely, but he might be perfectly fine, but I just wanted to do it just to try it. And, um, I don't know. I wasn't, I, it wasn't sitting right with me. So I, I, we took him out of there and put him back in with the other females. But the one thing I always kind of wonder like that. So we had our buck and we had a castrated, we had the buck goat and we put a castrated meal in with him. And he always just made him his little, his little toy kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> I kind of wonder if like in nature, there is no castrated males. It's a female or a male. So like, are they confused? Like, it's, they all smell go by like scent. Another dump. boar, right? Or does it not smell like a boar? Does it? What does it smell like? If they're not having the testosterone, mm-hmm. so they've been I've heard that, I've heard that the boar would try to mate. Oh, they do. I mean, our buck did. Yeah, would try do. to all yeah. the time try to mate. So that's when. So he was thinking it was his girlfriend and. Your cash rate of mail is like, I ain't no girlfriend. <laughs> that, that's what I was what, the thinking too that would this, happen. This is nature. This isn't like yeah. America yeah. 2020. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, I mean, in the end, it gave me more peace of mind. <laughs> you talking about that? I've had pigs get out and get in with uh, Mo Arbor and, uh, he will absolutely scare them back out of the, uh, the pen. Um, but something that I don't know, we just had happen. I guess it was last week. Um, the little piglets, they're not little anymore. They're a a year old. Um, they busted through the fence, the middle divider fence and got in with the two castrated males that we've got. And these two castrated males are like, they're going to be almost three years old by the time we butcher them this fall. So they're, they're getting up there in size. They're, you know, triple the size of these baby pigs. Well, about five of them just busted through the center fence. They knocked somehow I, they defeated the electric wire that, you know, divides the pins and then squeezed through the cattle panel. Well, these pigs, I have never seen these two castrated males act like boars, but they absolutely just like stood every hair on their mohawks their the back of their neck up started chomping their teeth and gritting their teeth like a boar does and just i mean they it looked like they were going to eat these baby pigs and they chased (laughs) them around and around and around i went out there to go feed and it's just like chaos going on it was like what the heck is going on in the pig pen and they're just chasing them around and these piglets are squealing and running and they can't figure out how to get back in their pen to safety well, they finally like caught him and just kind of, you know, headbutted him a little bit and kind of slobbered on him, but they didn't kill him or anything. They just, you know, finally caught him. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if they would kill him or what, but 
I have never seen a castrated male act like that. Like those pigs have been just the chillest, chillest guys I've ever had. Like they've been super, super calm. So I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, the babies don't try to get in that pen anymore. I know. It's just so weird, right? Like I just don't want two pigs running around my yard. <laughs> Especially not with a complete fence. No, I know. If I, yeah. I maybe feel a little bit better if I did have a fence, but I was like, man, we should just put them back. Just keep the peace. I want to sleep good tonight. <laughs> have you tried putting them, you know, side by side, like with just one net in between them, just let them get acquainted? Well, we have raised those piglets with Zeke, like like that. Um, kind of neck, we'd move them together uh, in separate nettings. I mean, they haven't been together like that in, it's been some months. So, yeah, maybe, maybe raise them like that first to get to know each other. But I don't know. I'm just making more work for myself. Zeke <laughs> doesn't care when he's by himself. It sounds like he seems pretty content. I mean, how do you know he cares? He, you know, like, they like say what? Lot, they say a lot of the times they, they won't eat and stuff. So, I mean, if he's eating and. I, no, he. He it doesn't seem any trouble to me. I mean, he's same. He's the same way, regardless if he's in there with Elvira or or by himself. Like, yep. he's super chill. Um, if he if he doesn't seem sad, like then I guess you're fine. He's maybe yeah. maybe he doesn't need a companion. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we'll do we'll we will raise them kind of together, but in separate pens, like as we move along. Because yeah, I mean, I feel bad in my my head, but. I'm human. <laughs> right. I like to talk to my pigs. <laughs> That's all right. I do it too. I know. It can't help do it. It can't help it. I think we all talk to our animals. Yeah. Did you get any more phone calls for any new animals yet? No, I did not. No. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> oh, actually, I got an email for some uh, bre breast breasty chickens. We got a similar email. Or if it's Ooh, the same people. The plot thickens. <laughs> I'm debating it. I'm debating it. I don't really need the chickens right now because we just got, you know, I'm about to put 60 on the grass right now and we just have, tw I just got 25 egg layers. So I don't know. I'm still debating. Yeah. We, we're supposed to get ours in like two weeks. I'm getting like, I don't know, 40 of them, something like that, our egg layers. And if they'd hit us up before we had ordered, Maybe yeah. take them up on it, but it's just where we're at. I would like to try them. I, I would, but I just don't know if the timing's correct. How long do you keep them inside for usually before you put them on pasture? You meet birds. Meat birds? Yeah. Three to four weeks. They're three weeks this week. Um, honestly, we're supposed to have, I think it's supposed to get down to the 30s. Yeah. The next couple of days. Yep. It's going to be cold. If it wasn't going to get in the 30s, I would have put them out today, but... I might wait a couple of days and then put them out. So about three or four weeks. In the summer, I'll put them out in three weeks. That's what we usually do. Put them three weeks if we can, but if the weather's going to be crappy, we'll push it off another week. Yeah, it's just not worth it. Yep. I mean, I want them out of that brooder, you know. When does your next batch come? How Like, how long did you space out your batches? A week. A week. Well, a week. So in, they're coming in two weeks. Gotcha. So we're going to put them out in grass next say next week and then the following week we're going to get another batch yep another 60 is that what you did more turkeys we're getting turkeys yeah i think it's this batch we're getting turkeys did you get 100 no we got 20 <laughs> <laughs> man that'd be so expensive to feed 100 turkeys yeah i know yeah so the guy we got our hay from he he's got a farm it's a little ways away he, it, organic farmer he grows a lot of his own, he'll grow his own wheat. Um, he grows corn, soybeans, and he actually makes a bunch of, uh, he'll make chicken feed and pig feed and stuff like that. So I might have to take a ride up there and <clears throat> try getting some local feed that he mills. That's cool. That'd you be great found a, a hookup like that. Yeah. I'm on the lookout for someone who does that, you know, organically yeah. around here yeah. and then can mill it. Uh, I, I got to find something a little bit closer than uh, uh, Kentucky feed. It's uh, 
<laughs> the honestly the the feed that we feed our animals is kind of eating our lunch i think we spend that is our number one expense is animal feed yep i believe it i just put out the email this week where you we're doing a chicken butchering class next month two two of them nice so nice we sold eight tickets so far really just today cool nice how many slots per class are you doing 10 10 per day two two classes two classes cool that's the first yeah the first ones and then we'll do a few more throughout the year but um so far somebody from pennsylvania texas and new jersey it's amazing that's cool that's awesome i tell you what like taking a page out of your book and you know doing hosting classes when we did that this winter i don't know why we haven't done it sooner because it was you know it's something we're already gonna do anyways we're gonna put our own meat in the freezer why not just do it yeah. and have people who want to learn over uh so yeah like i can't believe we didn't take a page out of your book sooner it uh it was a blast honestly like it, it's really cool and then you know I would have given anything to be able to attend a class like that when I was learning. Yep. Yeah, and the people who come that are really nice and pretty cool, like super friendly. Yeah, you meet yeah, a lot of cool mostly people. Mostly like-minded. Oh yeah. I know my what our hardest thing is we do put out so much content. It's hard to take the time to set up for the class and then do the class, try to film it, and then you, when we did it before, we did two of them. We got burnt out just from not from the class or the people but from everything else we have to do the normalness. So it's kind of like juggling around, like trying to figure out what you need to do or what, what you want to do kind of thing. I think that's the hard yeah. part. Oh yeah. It's almost like you have to like do one or the other, like, right. You know, <clears throat> yep. just do the class. Don't worry about filming. Right. Because they're doing, you know, or try to do both. <laughs> uh, that's what makes it hard. Yep. I will say when we I did the lamb, it was nice. I didn't film much of it. You know, I just did it myself and it was just, I don't know, it was low key. Just took my time doing it. We did a little bit of filming, but it was like, okay, this is nice. Just a, I felt, it was yeah. relaxing kind of thing. So it's kind it's of easier when it's like that. It's kind of nice. No, and, there's no pressure. Right. It's kind of nice that YouTube makes it so you can't show that stuff. So it gives you an excuse not to film. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Because sometimes I feel bad. Like if I do a project and I don't film it, I'm like, man, I should have filmed that. Why do I feel guilty? Because yeah. I didn't film that. I don't know if you guys ever get that way. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I know. I always regret not filming. Right. I never regret filming. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but sometimes it's nice not to film sometimes, too. It's like, man, this took like a quarter of the time to do. <laughs> That's oh, the truth. I've been doing some Actually, there's a lot of stuff too. that... I regret not filming. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially this fencing, man. The hardest part of building this fence is not the actual fence. It's filming myself build the fence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. yep. That's the hardest part. Trying to get a good shot of building a fence. You're just thinking like, okay, what can I do? How do I change the camera up? Where do, where do I want to put it now? And you're, you're constantly moving, building the fence. So then you got to constantly move and set up your camera. And I know. It's such a pain, but you know, that's what we do. <laughs> that, the the, then the it feels like a job, right? You know? Then in that aspect, it's a job. Stop complaining and just do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's, I don't know if it, I think sometimes it's just funny looking back. It's like, it's never, so we, we got the hay. No, I also got a load of shavings. If we bought our local feed store, if they buy an 18 wheel load of shavings, they get a good deal, but they, they have like a hundred that they don't have a place to store. And they used to have somebody else that would buy them. So they'd give them a good deal. Well, that person doesn't anymore. So I bought a hundred of them and I saved a couple of bucks a bag. So he was over I'm trying to think where I was going with the story. I don't even know, <laughs> don't even know now. <laughs> I oh, hate that. You filmed it. He, you filmed it he, or no? You did I, not film I, it. I didn't film the, un, the, the unloading because he ended up getting there early when I was trying to get ready and get clean up, clean up, make room for him. He showed up, which is fine. Um, but he was like, I, I've known the guy forever. And he was like, did you ever think this is where you would be? Did you ever think like, he's like, this is pretty cool. This is all the stuff that you've done. I'm like, yeah, I'm like looking back. I never would have thought 
this is where we would be. So I guess where I was going with that is like this weird, it's a weird career, like a weird yeah. job to have. So I don't think it's anything you'd ever would have thought like if you can right. film yourself and make your own, make your own videos. No, it's Man, different. Like that's the truth. It's cool. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Right. I got a, well, I got a neighbor. That, I got a neighbor that does not believe that this is what we actually do. I think he thinks we're drug dealers or something. Cause every time I talk to him, are you, so you're, right. you're doing that YouTube thing. Like that, is that a thing? Like you can make money doing that. And like he, he, it will not sink in that that, like I keep telling him, it's like, Hey man, just go watch a couple of videos. You'll see what we do. But right. like, he's not wired that way. That YouTube is not his thing. And so I, it reminded, it reminds me of when my dad, you know, back in the eighties was a computer programmer and nobody knew what that was. And he would tell them, yeah, I'm a computer programmer. And they'd be like, what's that? That's a job. And you know, now you say that and everybody knows what it is, but I guess, I guess we're just that, that way of, uh, history right now. We have a small group of friends we do church with. And back when we were starting to do YouTube, we had a small group with a bunch of them. And I think it went on for, I think we did it for at least three years. And it's when we were starting up YouTube, I was working a couple of different jobs doing the YouTube thing. And, you know, we'd be just talking about all the life stuff, doing life together. And we, we would do that for a while. And we got to, we started getting together with the same people, but with more people in a different group now. And one of the people just found out what we do, that we do YouTube. Cause we don't like, we don't talk about it really. It's like, it's just what we do. We don't make a thing about it. And they're like, no, oh, like, so they're like asking us our backstory. Like, how'd you get into this? And then our other friends were there. So, and they, one of them said something, I'm like, like, you know, the story, you guys have been there the whole time. And they, there was three of them, three families there. And they're like, yeah, like when they were starting this thing, YouTube was not a thing. And we thought basically they thought we were nuts, but they didn't tell us. They like encouraged us the whole time, but they thought we <laughs> were nuts because YouTube friends. back then. Yeah. They were good friends. It was like, so that was like 2015. So like, it wasn't really anything back then. So they were like, yeah, this kid's crazy. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> So, kind of funny here and like the other sides had you guys i want to know did you guys tell your family like right away what you were doing and what did they think oh yeah yeah right from the beginning when you were doing it you told them yeah oh yeah yeah we didn't tell all of our family but we told like our immediate families um just you know hey we, we're doing this youtube thing it's kind of cool and they all started watching uh but what's weird to me is that all of our extended family now watches like Meg's cousins and aunts and uncles watch. Uh, it, it's just really weird. It's like, okay, I didn't think homesteading was your thing, but all right, it's all good. Yeah, I don't know if anyone else in my I know like my mom and dad and grandma, my sister watch, and the Rain's parents and stuff, but I don't know if like, cause I have a bunch of cousins in California. I don't know. I mean, we're pretty close, but I don't know if they even watch at all. I mean, I have like younger nephews or younger cousins too. I think they just, I think they just think it's neat. I have a YouTube channel, but I, whether they watch or not, I don't know. <laughs> yep. Actually, something that's hard is having uh, people in our outside of YouTube life find out we do YouTube. And <laughs> when they find that out, they start treating us different that's that's kind of hard that's kind of weird mm. um yep. like one lady found out at our dojo and told the whole dojo what we do and it kind of got awkward for a little bit but i mean it's cool now but yeah it's it's kind of weird it's like nah just go back to thinking we're just a weird family that all does you know martial arts together like that was fine <laughs> i wonder why i wonder why that is i mean Maybe they, Sm I don't know. Small town. Maybe they feel like they're peering on your personal life because they're watching your videos. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of awkward for them. I don't know. It's like, hey, don't don't think differently of us. We put our pants on yeah. one leg at a time, just like you do. We just right. film a lot yeah. of our life. Yep. <laughs> All right. We're at an hour, guys. You guys have anything else for this week? I'll let you know if we survive the blizzard next week. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, take pictures of the eclipse for us. Right, I got a 
I got those video. the glasses, <laughs> like the cardboard glasses, and then I got <laughs> you gotta a, film it. I'm gonna I got a filter for the phone too. We got the, the glasses cool. and the filter. So we'll see. We'll you gonna put it on a video at all? Yeah, we'll put it on a video if it's anything. Oh, cool. I don't know. Everybody's like hyping this thing up like it's this huge thing. Yeah. I don't like it it's an eclipse. But we're gonna find out, I guess. Next one happens in twenty forty five, I think. So okay. it's all good. If I miss this one, I'll catch the next one. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's it. Oh, I appreciate everyone listening and watching this podcast on YouTube and listening on iTunes and Spotify and all the podcast apps. We really much appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much, and we'll see you guys next week. Have a good week. Later.